welcome you to participate in our workshop on the OTT services. Uh, this afternoon, the workshop uh, is sponsored by Internet Society of China and also co-sponsored by China Association of the Science and Technology. The, the purpose of this workshop is to find the build, to build the ecosystem for a win-win model to develop the OTT services. You know, the OTT communication service is a term used to describe the deliver the real-time communication services applications and the futures over the top of the internet. So over the top of the internet, so OTT service. I think the uh, recent years, OTT service worldwide is uh, rapidly growing, including in some developing country like uh, China, uh, Korea, Japan, and other the countries. Uh, I think the internet uh, new application, new technology, as a web-based uh, social network and uh, mobile applications, and together with the OTT services, has dramatically changed the telecommunication service industries. Telecom provider face a serious uh, pressure and a challenge. They are want to remain their competitive on the market and uh, to remain to deliver more services uh, and more uh, innovations. But the new raising OTT companies, provider companies, is mainly the internet companies. They are delivering more modern, flexible, and more cheaper, even free services to customers. Though the new problem the now the problem is how to get telecom operators and the OTT providers to go to win-win model. If yes, how to get it? So our workshop is now we discuss this issue is very important. So I uh, I think this uh, workshop will be beneficial for all, particular for all the internet users and also service providers and uh, OTT providers. Uh, today, we uh, uh, have honor to invite some uh, distinguished panelists. May I introduce uh, the our panelists? Uh, on my right side is uh, Professor Tao Xiaofeng from uh, from China. He is a uh, uh, he is a professor at uh, Beijing University of the Post and Telecommunications. And um, from my left side is Ms. Jiang Yang, uh, vice chairman of Tenxin companies based in China. Tenxin is the leading internet service company in China. And also on my uh, right side, they come from South Korea, uh, Mr. Park. He's a lawyer and also expert on this uh, field. On my left side is from Iran, is Professor Sharam, because his uh, family name is very difficult to pronounce, so I say I brief. So let's us. Uh, to invite first speaker, uh, Mr. Tao Xiaofeng, Professor Tao Xiaofeng. Uh, he will give us an uh, overall picture of the uh, OTT service uh, uh, development situation. And uh, I think uh, I asked all the panelists, 
make their presentation uh, no more 15 minutes. Uh, better is uh, 10 minutes, finish the presentation. Then the, we open floor for interaction, uh, for audience and uh, uh, with uh, panelists. So I give floor to Professor Tao, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gao. Uh, I'm Tao from uh, Beijing University of Post and Telecommunication. Uh, today, my topic is over the top surface, uh, we as telecommunication operators. Uh, statistic uh, data show that we are already in the era of the mobile internet. For example, in China, the mobile internet has gained its popularity from the year 2009. It is worthwhile to note that from the year 2012, people prefer use mobile devices to get connected with the internet, and people will go even further in future. In other words, mobile communication is comp competitive industry due to its increasing demand and rapid development. Uh, actually, mobile internet is a, an extension of internet. With mobile internet, we don't have to keep staying with a, uh, with a cable. Instead, we can access the internet with mobile devices at home, for example, on the sofa, working, in vehicle, on the way, and even in subway, almost everywhere in the world. This is to say we have more chances to access the internet with mobile devices. Nowadays, various kinds of services have been provided for mobile users, such as social network, online pay, video broadcast, online games, and so on. The popularity of mobile internet results from the rapid development of mobile communication, especially uh, the data transmission rates for the third generation mobile communication uh, is about 2 megabits per second, while the data rate for fourth generation mobile communication, 4G for short, is about 100 megabits per second. In 5G, uh, the data rate will achieve 1 gigabps. For example, our university, uh, we established a TDD trial network, 4G network, uh, in the year 2006. Is, uh, the data rate is about 122 megabits per second. Uh, in the year 2009, uh, the data rate is about 1 gigabps. Uh, I mean, that's uh, in the year 2009. Uh, in the near future, we will develop a 5G trial network for much higher data rate, for example, 1 gigabits to 10 gigabits. Besides, uh, you can see here, for local, wireless local area network, wireless LAN, can provide at least 100 megabits per second data rate now. And the data rate can achieve up to several gigabits per second, for example, in the year 2014. So this one, we call the Li-Fi instead of Wi-Fi. This, mean, this means uh, light communication. We use this one. Light communication uh, with, uh, with, with person. For example, this one can provide higher than 150 megabits per second data rate. In summary, mobile internet already has the ability to support a high speed environment. We can provide high data rate services, uh, such as high television, video, 3D TV, etc. Note that based on the rapid development of the mobile internet, some over the top services, OTT for short, have been developed, such as high data rate OTT TV services. At the same time, with the popularity of mobile internet, some lower data rate uh, but higher overhead OTT services has been developed as well, such as real-time communication applications and uh, social networks. Generally speaking, OTT services uh, is any services you can receive over the internet. It is not provided by your telecommunication operators the OTT services providers just utilize the internet established by the operators and charge the users for the provided content and leaving the operator at a simple 
maybe as a simple bit pipe. The OTT world is experience-centric and can combine any devices, access, and services. For example, OTT can provide the interconnection between different devices, such as cell phones, PCs, and televisions. Actually, in the year 2005, uh, in our university, BOPT, we developed one OTT trial system, which consists of one intelligent terminals with wireless access and one desktop PC with wired access. If the wireless channel is not good enough, the video ordered by the terminal can be redirected to the desktop PC from the network in order to get clear pictures or videos. A Skype is also a kind of uh, OTT services. If there was a mobile internet at the first beginning time, maybe Skype would be more successful. Uh, on the other hand, the emergence of OTT has put forward a big challenge to the operators. Uh, in the left picture, we can see uh, the, trend, the trend of P2P, SMS, and MMS. Uh, expenditure will be decreased, for example, uh, about $13 billion. Uh, we, we, this is uh, predicted in the year 2017 compared with uh, the 2012. Take the right picture. Uh, uh, the right picture shows the opera operator review and the prof uh, profit. Uh, one operator, uh, you can see from the, the year 2010 and then year two, uh, 2011 and 2012 and uh, 2013, we can see uh, in quarter, uh, the first quarter uh, to uh, the third quarter of the year 2003, the profit was decreased by about 2% for the first time uh, compare, compared with that in uh, Q1 to Q3. Uh, 2012. I think the reason uh, for this phenomenon is that OTT services belong to the maybe the real internet. I, I said the real internet, where the telecommunication system is designed for the traditional services, such as, uh, for example, calls, messages, and the data communications. OTT uh, maybe is from the more uh, from the more internet, which is the combination of mobile communication and the internet. However, internet and the telecommunication has two totally different design philosophy. For example, for uh, mobile communication, we, we uh, try to um, let QS guarantee, quality of service guarantee. But for uh, internet, sometimes we use best effort. We just try our best to support the services to, to the users. This is different. Uh, however, I think, on the other hand, OTT also provides a great ch uh, chance to the telecommunication operators. You can see uh, from the third generation, uh, 3G, 3G, for example, WCDMA, TDS, CDMA, CDMA 2000, 3G. For 3G era, uh, the operator has been thinking for the killer applications to expand their uh, services, such as voice, high quality video streams, um, mobile games, and uh, uh, 3D uh, TV, something like this. Somehow, uh, I think uh, OTT could be act as one of those uh, killer applications for the telecom, uh, telecom networks. It's newer and popular, although it still need a technical breakthrough. Uh, technically, win-win uh, is possible, I think. For example, uh, via uh, services uh, bundling uh, between OTT services provider and operator, uh, you can see here, uh, Telefonica. Telefonica will cooperate with Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and RIM in developing uh, changing, uh, challenging charging services. Operator also uh, adapt their system design to OTT services. I know uh, Trend Mobile nowadays uh, do some work in this area. And uh, yesterday night, uh, a lady also uh, told me OTT services provider also optimize OTT services according to the uh, 
characteristics uh, of the mobile communication systems. I think this is the good news for us. As a university uh, um, delegate of our university, I think university also could play a positive role. For example, BOPT, our university now has established 4G trial, trial network and is working on uh, 5G trial network now. OT applications can, some, uh, some applications can be tested our uh, trial network. Our trial, trial network then operators and uh, OT service providers could optimize their design respectively according to the, our trial network, according to our feedback. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Tao. You know, Professor Tao is a very famous uh, high-level researcher in China in field of the 4G and the 4G beyond. Yeah, he led a lot of research project in university and some uh, uh, institutions. He has uh, more than 50 patents in this field and published more than 100 papers. And uh, also he teach a lot of uh, graduates and postgraduates and doctor degrees students. And uh, I think the, he gave us a very clear picture of the uh, latest uh, trends uh, of the OTT services, particular after the internet, in the mobile internet emerging. So I, I think uh, he gave us a very good uh, presentations. Uh, I think uh, if some audience or other panelists uh, have some comments or questions, you can, I think, a few minutes uh, left to floor to audience. You have some comments? Okay. Uh, Vikram Tivatya from Cellular Operators Association of India. So I'm coming from the mobile operators side. So there's no doubt that OTT is very popular and uh, the uptake has been very fast. But the fact of the matter is there's an increasing concern within operators as to how to monetize your network. And while OTT is uh, eating away into that uh, uh, portion very significantly, uh, the, the challenge we are seeing is that more similar applications, in fact, some government departments may start considering for social and for G2C, a government to citizen services using a similar model, uh, where you start paying for spectrum or the uh, high capex of uh, laying out a network. Uh, I think uh, we seriously want to see more win-win emerge, but right now, I think uh, operators have a major concern. <laughs> and uh, the GSMA has tried to popularize their rich communication media suit called JOIN, it's not yet uh, taken off, but the pace at which uh, uh, innovations happening on OTT space is far outpacing what the telecom operators seem to be doing. So how do we address that challenge? Your thoughts, Prof. Sir? Yeah. I think your question is uh, focused on the purpose of the, our workshop. <laughs> so, so maybe, uh, I think uh, maybe I ask the Professor to make a brief answer. Then. Uh, other panelists will answer your question, okay? Yes, thank you. I think this is a, a big question, but I just give you a small answer. And for 4G, for currently, uh, the operator, uh, as I know, Telemobile nowadays uh, is beginning to op uh, optimize their network. But for 5G, uh, nowadays, we also get a very large project for our government. I think when we design 5G network, we maybe we should adopt some opinions from the internet uh, OTT uh, uh, pro uh, providers. And I, I think this is very important. Years ago, we designed our 3G, 4G, mainly according to our experiments in a uh, telecommunication area, but not from the uh, internet area. But for 5G design, I think we should adopt 
some opinions from the uh, OTT service provider. As I think this is very important. Nowadays, from this year, our government launched a very large project about 5G uh, research. It's about uh, one, the first stage is about 1.6, uh, 1.6, uh, what is it? Billion. Oh, no. It's about 0 0.016 uh, billion RMB, the first stage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. I think. Uh, I think we 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 will uh, continue discussion with your question, okay? And also, uh, I want to maybe later after the panelists make a presentation, I want to hear from your opinion on this answer, okay? Thank you. Now, next uh, speaker comes from Korea, uh, Mr. Park. He is an attorney at law, legal and the registration staff of the OpenNet Korea, member of the Net Neutrality User Forum of Korea. Uh, as you know, the Korea also very famous uh, OTT service already successful. It's uh, so-called the Kako Talk. As uh, Mr. Park will, will give us uh, about the lessons from a uh, case of the Korean uh, OTT provider Kako Talk services. I think uh, he will uh, give us some win-win uh, model. Uh, maybe should be happen. Now, Mr. Parker. Yeah, thank you for uh, your kind introduction and also for the opportunity to uh, join this workshop here in IJF. Uh, my name is Joan Park, a lawyer working for Open Net Korea. And Open Net Korea is a nonprofit organization based in Korea, which campaigns for uh, freedom of expression in cyberspace, reform of copy copyright regime, and proper government uh, policies affecting users, as well as service providers in the internet. Um, today, I would like to divide my presentation into uh, three parts. And the first part deals with the case of Korean um, telecommunication uh, companies collided with the OTT companies. And the second part concerns with uh, the brief legal uh, analysis of the case. And the last part relates to uh, the consequences of the case and a very simple win-win strategy. Uh, firstly, um, I would like to introduce the Kakelta case of Korea in 2012. Um, in May 2012, Kakelta, as you already know, a message service provider with more than um, 20 million uh, daily domestic users, launched the Voice Talk, the Envoy service, which is OTT service as well. Um, major mobile uh, carriers such as KT and SKT, announced that uh, they would block the service unless extra network uh, usage were paid. And the telecom company, companies also claimed that uh, the OTT service, the Kakao Talks, Voice Talk, uh, causes data traffic congestion. And what they're doing is uh, free riding on their network. And Kakao Talk counterclaimed that there is no uh, evidence that uh, Envoy service causes data traffic congestion, and it, cre it creates uh, discrimination from uh, foreign free Envoy services like um, Skype or Viber. Um, and Korea Communication Commission, which is regulatory body of Korean communication, uh, had allowed the telecoms to discriminate the access to Envoy services based on the tiered data fee. And KT and SKT actually blocked the lowest two-tier data plan user not using the Envoy services, and which uh, provoked an immediate backlash from users and net neutrality advocates. Uh, but I think the blocking Envoy service arbitrarily um, allegedly infringes the existing norm 
the competition law. Uh, Korean competition law stipulates that no enterpriser shall commit any act uh, of trading with a certain transaction partner by unfairly taking advantage of his or her position in trade. I think the blocking and web service without a proper ground uh, is abusing their position in trade. And several NGOs, including Open Net Korea, filed a lawsuit against telecom telecommunication company and court, court of Korea will find whether uh, the telecom's action infringed the um, competition law of Korea or not. And telecom's blocking envelope service without any proper ground also infringes a new norm regarding net neutrality. Uh, as we already know, the architecture of internet had based on, designed on end-to-end -end principle, uh, th which means that the intelligence of network shall be found on its ends or edges, not within the network itself. Uh, this has been regarded as a driving force, which brings about the inno innovation and development of internet. Uh, the concept of net neutrality, as you, as you have already known, that in, inferred from these internet design principles, so which means the network provider should trade all data equally in their networks, and they should not discrim discriminate user type of content and type of attached device. So there are uh, global movement for preserving net neutrality. Uh, some countries like Netherlands or Chile amended the law and United States, as, as you already have already known, uh, approved op open internet rule in 2010, and Korea is uh, now in progress of uh, establishing the guideline for net neutrality. Uh, in Korea, a net neutrality user forum, which, I, which is I am a member of the forum, uh, actively participated in the setting new norm uh, regarding uh, net neutrality, representing users' interest. Uh, the NN User Forum launched in May 2012, the last year, and 11 NGOs voluntarily joined, as well as users and experts. And by uh, doing some public lectures, discussion forums, you know, or other issues, standard campaigns regarding net neutrality, Neutrality, uh, and then user form actually participating in the setting the norm. Uh, finally, I will elaborate on the consequences of the case in 2013 and suggest a user oriented win win strategy. Uh, firstly, telecoms uh, in, of Korean, Korean telecoms introduced new data plans, but still the most users are buying 3G data plan, which is blocking the Envoy service entirely. But their um, new data plan, the current company uh, has introduced, the new data plans are as follows. The highest tier data plan allows the free SMS plus unlimited voice call, as well as no, there is no restriction of Envoy service. And even lowest tier data plan, the telecoms allows the envoy service restrict, restrictively. And secondly, uh, um, telecoms jointly launched the service named Join, uh, which is the messaging service through 3G and 4G data net network or Wi-Fi, uh, which has a function of file sharing and messaging and video sharing and voice calling only through uh, 3G or forge data network. But the service is only available exclusively among mobile in incumbents. And finally, uh, Telecoms launched the VOLT service, uh, which is targeting on the voice call or voice talk of Kakao Talk. Uh, the VOLT means the voice over LTE that voice calling that enables the voice calling over LTE, the forge network. Uh, which, is, which has the equivalent me mechanism with Envoy service. But 
this service is only available now between the same mobile carrier users. And I would like to finalize my, finalize my presentation by suggesting quite a simple win-win strategy uh, oriented to users. Uh, firstly, telecoms should not discriminate service arbitrarily. Uh, the blocking service arbitrarily infringes the existing and the new norms regarding the neutrality. And let users choose a service between the, the service of the telecom telecommunication companies such as JOIN or VOLTE and the service of OTT company. Then the innovative service will survive in the market. And secondly, the prerequisite of uh, the making the new norm, it, uh, user participation should be equitably guaranteed unless the user's interest hardly uh, be taken into account. That was my presentation, and thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Ms. Park. It, uh, you are very in interesting to introduce the latest trend of the cargo and uh, what has happened in Korea. Uh, maybe I have questions for you. Uh, could you please uh, more detail the uh, subscribe, describe of the uh, functions of the CACO? What is service? What kind of service they deliver? Uh, how to charge for end user, and also operators how to charge the CACO services? CACO um, talk user. Uh, do not uh, pay a uh, fee to um, the mobile carriers. They only uh, they buy the 3G, net, 3G or 4G network. They, they do not, uh, the telecom communication company do not charge the use of Kakao Talk. Uh, uh, the telecom co uh, provider charge Kakao Talk only by data flow, traffic flow, or other variated services also? Uh, only, only data flow, OK. OK, you have some uh, questions or comments? Um, uh, maybe uh, many people uh, will have uh, some question how uh, Kakotok uh, has uh, the business model for monetizing uh, some benefit. Uh, basically, uh, now, nowadays, uh, Kakotok over a line, uh, uh, these kinds of uh, new services has become a platform for another of the top services. For example, online game. Online game is launching uh, over the uh, Kakaotalk application service, attached with the Kakaotalk uh, uh, chattering service. And also, uh, Kakaotalk is providing another uh, private place for users to decorate uh, their home site. So uh, uh, users could some uh, items for decorating uh, their own home sites. So, in this way, uh, in indirect ways, they can get uh, some uh, money. So uh, its business model uh, is quite different from the existing uh, telecommunication companies. But uh, nowadays, more and more uh, telecommunication companies and other competitive uh, of the top service uh, application developers are feeling that more and more cacao talk platform is becoming another uh, basic platform of, of the top services. So it is uh, predominating the whole market of application services. So it has become a serious threat to other competitive application services. That's the fact. Thank you. Would, would you please uh, introduce yourself, please? Uh, From where? Yeah. I'm, also, uh, I'm also an uh, open member uh, and uh, 
uh, open right. that is one of the civil society, and uh, we are uh, grappling with the uh, government bad policies regarding uh, net neutrality. So that's why I, I, I have some understanding uh, about uh, how uh, Kakao has their own uh, business model. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Park, you have some more? Edit? Oh, okay, no. Uh, please. Hi. Um, thank you for your uh, very, very impressive. Uh, talk. I'm come from Tencent. I'm Shenshen. I'm asking for uh, after the operator uh, released the uh, new data plan, is there any impact on their user scale? And does that mean uh, the the high level uh, users increase, or the people just uh, give up the OTT service? Uh, because high tired, uh, high tired uh, data plan is so expensive, it's more than about um, one hundred dollars per month. So people tend to not to take the top tired, uh, unlimited uh, uh, service plan. But there are still a lot of um, they still use. Uh, the OTT service as well after after the launch of the new data plan. So I think it's kind of a discrimina uh, discrimination on the OTT service provider. So you mean it's the final uh, consequence of the the lawsuit? That means this kind of um, discrimination uh, action is kind of uh, legal. Could you elaborate on more your question? I mean, so uh, you mean this is a, a suit case, yes. and the the final consequence is uh, the operator uh, released their the discriminate uh, data plan, uh, which you you just mentioned very expensive, uh, almost a one hundred dollars plan. Uh, only these people can use the the OTT service. No, no. The lower tiered data plan user can uh, use Envoy service restrictively, okay. as well as the top tiered oh, okay. data plan user. So they can uh, they need to pay more data fees. Uh, but uh, the 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 Envoy service, yep. the lower tiered uh, data plan user cannot use full fully the Envoy service. So that okay. that yeah. Okay. Thank you. No more question. Now I would like to invite the next speaker come from China, the Mr. Jiang Yang, the Vice President of Tencent, uh, leading internet service companies. Uh, Mr. Jiang had ever been worked in software center of the Ministry of the Post Telecommunication China, Asian Info, Siemens, and the Nokia Siemens network. He has over 30 years ex working experience in telecom uh, industry. He will talk about the OTT uh, services in China. Uh, it's a very famous uh, OTT service, uh, WeChat or MicroChat. So uh, uh, we, we wel welcome the Mr. Mrs. Chang Yang make a presentation. Hi. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Jiang Yang from China Tencent Company. At first, I would like to introduce my company with several numbers. Tencent has several number one in China. Instant messaging QQ is number one. Now it's, it has monthly active 
accounts has reached uh, 890 million. Social network system, QZone, like Facebook, is number one. Now the QZone has monthly active users um, has reached uh, 626 million. The web portal QQ.com is number one. It has the most uh, service traffic now. And also Tencent's online gaming is number one. It has the biggest market share and the peak users has reached uh, 8.4 million. So you know that uh, Tencent is the leading provider of the internet value-added services. And now Tencent has another, besides those four number ones, Tencent has another number one that's mobile app, most frequent, most used mobile app, Weixin, WeChat, like just uh, and the Korean people mentioned the Kako talk. So now Tencent is one of the biggest OTT enterprises in China. For today's topic, could OTT win-win with operators? I would, let, I would like to describe it from three aspects. Let me introduce it from the first part, current status of China mobile internet. China mobile internet market is growing very fast. From the left chart, you can see that uh, by the end of this year, the smartphone install base is estimated that the number uh, will be will will reach 538, almost a double the number of last year. I know. The smart smartphone number in Indonesia is also growing very fast. And on the right side, the chat, from this chat, we can see that people now use mobile phone to access internet um, has exceed the people to access the internet through PC. So with the fast development of smartphone, mobile phone app became developing highlight. From this chart, it listed, uh, listed the first uh, 15 first, uh, first 15 app on the mobile phone. And we can see that the instant message ranks first. About 84% users has installed instant message app on their mobile phone. I have to mention here that now more than 71% of China mobile phone users have Weixin. So in my second part, I will introduce the fast emerging OTT, Weixin. What's Weixin? Weixin is a, a new way to connect you can use voice uh, voice chat, and you can send text chat. You can have group chat. And also, you can send some animated emoticons, customized e emoticons. This thing was launched in January of 2011. And within 34 months, the users has exceeded 500 million all over the world. Compared with the instant messaging QQ, we, we developed by a PC era. It took seven years to reach the similar scale of users. So we can say that in the mobile internet, the, it's more easier and faster to develop uh, the APP, mobile app users. With the fast emerging OTT Weixin, also in China, the, the operate, operators are facing big challenges. Could OTT win-win with operators? 
The impact on the operators can be analyzed from two aspects. One is the pressure on the network because OTT generates much more signaling traffic. We call it signaling storm. The other is the pressure on, the, on their income, on operator's income. Now, for example, I sell them send SMS and use VC as a substitution. So the revenue of voice and SMS or MMS is in decline, even though there was an increase in data revenue. But it wasn't enough to offset the loss of voice and the SMS income caused by OTT. And also, the operators are afraid of to be pipelization. Here, the pipelization is the word I create, meaning the water and the gas companies meter the flow of product through their pipeline. The operators will need to measure activity and charge customers for use of their data pipeline. But I don't think facing this challenge is the nightmare for operators or <laughs> to operators is the end of the world. <laughs> We all, actually, we all have the solutions. For the pressure on their network side, I don't think that's only OTT enterprise problem. You know, th there are four ac factors to influence the, the network resource consumptions. First, as the smartphone Mm, wait a moment. Um, the smartphone generate and um, maintain uh, always on connections to the cloud server in order to send the con uh, to receive mess push message. But for iOS, um, they they. They usually can have the uh, all the app on the phone um, to use one connection, but the Android is different. the The worst case for Android is that um, almost every every app could send each dedicated connections. So. Huawei, from Huawei company, they show us the data that um, for the for the Android devices, it could have the three times three times much more signaling traffic than iPhone. So, as a, as a device vendors, they should have standardized the usage of IP connection and the notification method. And for mobile, for the operators, I think they could upgrade their network to the broadband, to 3G, 4G, and to, to get more network resources. <laughs> and for telecommunication equipment supply, such as Huawei, Ericsson, Nokia Siemens Networks, and ZTE. They can also have some uh, good radio link, uh, radio resource management to optimize it. As a OTT, as a OTT application de developer, we can also optimize the service logic and IP connection usage. Anyhow, the four parties have the same goal. That's to seek and keep best user experience. And uh, we, we will work together to try, 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 try our best <laughs> to, uh, to 
reach the win, 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 the five win, not two win, the five win, besides the four parties, and the fifth party is the users, and the build the long-term sustainable industry ecosystem. I'll skip these uh, slides because I've described it before. The OTT influence on the revenue structure of telecom operators, that's obvious there. Um, the, the revenue, um, this is about the China mobile, the revenue, the growth rate is in decline, but uh, the, the data traffic grows a lot. So facing the challenge, challenges, um, there are three scenarios of the reactions from operators. First is the weaken ATT, try to restrict the OTT enterprises. The second one is to cooperate with OTT. And the, the third one is build the telecoms on OTT in China. China Mobile and China Telecom choose number three, the third one, build telecoms or OTT. China Mobile built Fishing and China Telecom built um, Yixin. They cooperate with another internet company. Tencent companies support the second scenario, cooperate with China Unicom. I can give you an example how we can develop a win-win scenario. In August of this year, Tencent and China Unicom launched the Weixin World SIM card. They delivered to the users with five privileges. Four are from we, uh, Tencent, Weixin, one is that they can give the users group chat privilege. For Weixin, usually people can get the maximum people of group chat is 40. But for this uh, Weixin World SIM card users, they can get the, um, the maximum people of group chat uh, can be 150. And also, they can get some emote, emoticons privilege. Within WhatsApp card, they can use some special emoticons. Third is that um, Within deliver the payment privilege. They can get 1.5% discount for prepaid, prepaid recharge. And the fourth privilege is discount for mobile game recharge. China Unicom offer the data traffic privilege for the 500 megabit data with only 10 yuan. So what kind of benefits could China Unicom and the Tencent get from this cooperation? First, it helps to build a brand that OTT and the operators can have the collaboration to release the worry about the, the charging issues about Weixin from the users. Second, it can help to lead the user's experience. For China Unicom, it not only increasing their data revenue, but also attracting more subscribers trained from other operators. For Tencent, it increased Weixin using usage and help to extend new services. Besides all benefits, Tencent can also get a fridge benefit that it helps to increase Tencent e-commerce business because Yixin and PaiPai 
other channels to sell the same card. So this kind of cooperation between Tencent and the Uni China Unicom shapes the differentiated competitive advantages. From, from my presentation, I think you know my answer to the could OTT and the operators be cooperated. My answer is definitely it, it can. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jiang Yang. She is clearly answering your question. <laughs> Could be win-win <laughs> model, yes. And already, already started. Uh, Tencent with China Unicom. And also, the, I think the, uh, 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 Mr. Jiang Yang said, uh, uh, he said it's a, it's a, now it's an operator and the OTT provider. Uh, they are competing in the three uh, scenarios. Uh, first, uh, operator charge or block the OTT service. Uh, like uh, Korean, huh? <laughs> already, already they have some uh, example. Secondly, uh, with partnership, uh, making some partnership uh, between the operators and the uh, OTT uh, service is like China, Ten Tencent uh, has done. And the uh, uh, third one is the uh, uh, operator, they launch their own OTT services, uh, like uh, uh, China Telecom, and the China mobile. Uh, but I think uh, uh, in case of China, the uh, micro chat is launched by uh, Tencent. Tencent. Only 15 months, the end user increased from zero to 500 million. Is <laughs> this uh, competitiveness uh, already uh, is uh, over? Other competitors, including China Telecom and uh, China Mobile. So it's uh, amazing because they, uh, their services not only uh, free, uh, not only free charge for end user, but also it's delivered with the, uh, every day's innovative services, very modern, very uh, uh, flexible, very uh, easy using. So I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a tension micro chat OTT service is a very successful case in China. So maybe you have some question or you have some uh, comments? Okay, please. First, uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, Mrs. Yang's uh, explanation on China Unicorn's case. Uh, it seems to be very excellent. Then uh, there, is, uh, there, is, uh, there, uh, there are some questions uh, regarding uh, that kind of bundling services. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not so sure uh, whether how, how uh, much uh, proportion of uh, uh, market power uh, China Unicorn has in Chinese mobile market, and also prepaid service. Prepaid service uh, has uh, how much portion uh, of market power has? I, I'm not sure, sure. but uh, depending on uh, such a market proportion, such kind of bundling service could have some problems uh, in terms of competition uh, regulation perspective. Uh, you know, uh, that kind of uh, Bundling of a telco uh, plus uh, application service is a uh, specific uh, genre of uh, application services like chatting services, online game services. Very specified services can be effectively bundled with the existing uh, tele telecommunication services. In that case, if uh, uh, such a telco has a higher proportion of market power, it could control the whole application market. 
So it, it could uh, make some serious warning to uh, other competitive application service providers. So uh, how uh, this kind of problems could be sorted out? Uh, and have we uh, any, uh, uh, any uh, this kind of issues are being addressed? The, I, I think the proposing of the Unicom, uh, China Unicom uh, market share in the mobile services, I think uh, still relative law. Relative law. Yeah, relative law. But, yeah, smallest in the uh, three, in the, in the, in the three, three more, more uh, operators. Uh, according to the, the bundling uh, the services, uh, I think is uh, I, maybe Mr. Xiangyang, Mr. Xiangyang can explain. The, they are, it's uh, just a bundling the very aided service. The bas basic service is still no charge, no charge, micro charge. Uh, but uh, if you charge something, then they deliver the very aided service. Uh, maybe in the package uh, they have some uh, uh, additional services to end the user. So it's, I think it's no, no any uh, problems, it's my opinion. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Mr. Xiangyang can explain more. Yeah, I know your concern. Because China Unicom is the smallest uh, um, operators in China among the other two, um, among the three operators. So I don't think that's a problem, boundary issue. And uh, just now I explained the cooperation uh, case. I think that we're just exploring um, we we just are trying, it. and uh, you'll never know <laughs> it's successful or not. But we we try to 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 push push on the win win <laughs> direction to go. Okay, thank you. Okay. More comments? Okay. Vikram Tivatya, Cellular Operators Association of India. To your point uh, about the Android uses a greater portion of the signaling channels versus the iOS system. So have you taken it up with Android or with Google to reduce that load on the network? Or is it left to Google or to Android developers uh, yeah, you ask a, a very good question. In fact, uh, you know, Android, the operating system is uh, uh, open. So for each developer, maybe there are some, um, there are some different uh, um, scheme. And uh, so it's very difficult to, um, to uh, organize them to, to form the same platform, to ask every APP, to send the connection signal uh, at the same time. So I think maybe somebody, I wish Google could do something on it. I hope so. Okay, okay maybe if you have a more question, maybe we left uh, finally all the panelists to finish their presentation. We open a general discussion. You can raise your question later. Now, we uh, invite the next speaker. It's uh, 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 Mr. Sharam Sobo Tipo, uh, come from Iran. He is in charge of the Iranian ICT Guide Organization, Director of the International Affairs. And uh, I saw. Uh, Mr. Sharam's uh, name card. He he is also co-founder of the Persian IGF. Huh? No more. Oh yes. Okay. So I think the uh, Mr. Sharam will give us some uh, analysis of the differences model.
between OTT and the telecommunication. So now we we welcome Mr. Sharam. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shahram Sobutipur from the Iranian ICT Guild Organization, or ICT Association of Iran, uh, which is an NGO which covers uh, the whole private sector of uh, ICT activists. And I'm also uh, active in uh, consulting several uh, companies and organizations regarding ICT business models. Uh, well, uh, my, speak, uh, my speech would be a little bit different uh, from our colleagues. Uh, we were looking for uh, some models of win-win uh, cooperation between uh, the telecoms and uh, OTC service providers. But uh, there is an echo here. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I would like to uh, go somehow negative. <laughs> but finally, I, sh I, I assure you there is, there is a positive thing in this. Uh, so I would like uh, to uh, talk about the experience we had in our country as a developing country and compare it to uh, those success stories that uh, we had uh, already behind, besides me. <laughs> uh, so I, go, uh, I, I would like to have a flashback of the story. Actually, once, of a once upon a time in Iran, there was a uh, telecom company which had the monopoly of the all communication services offered to the end users across the country. It was about 20 years ago, and then uh, after a few years, internet appears in my country. Then gradually, a few years later, we saw the services that came, uh, uh, that operated on, t uh, on that in internet infrastructure, which were competing the services offered by that co telecom company. It was the beginning of a challenge between the telecom service provider and all and the uh, internet service providers, and uh, this challenge continued and continued and increased as well as any any other country that we know uh, until the time that uh, the telecom service the uh, provider understood that he is losing it is losing its monopoly. Its uh, what we say, it's monopoly on the communication services. So what, there was no choice for them to go and uh, put, put pressure on these new services and try to ban them. Of course, in every country it has happened, they would try first to ban them, first to uh, block them or charge them for the, their services. So it continues and continues until the time that uh, they, they found that there is no uh, no way to continue this kind of blockage. The voices very, uh, are, are increasing against these uh, actions. So there was, there was a very, very slight uh, change of model of blockage in uh, this situation. And uh, it happened after the privatization of the telecom company. Even after the privatization, we didn't face any change in this uh, situation. Um, there was a change in the uh, in the face actually, but we didn't face uh, the change in the core of the uh, on, on the whole uh, case and on the whole program. Pro problem. The problem this this time came to the regulatory and the uh, regulations that uh, this telecom company used as a leverage to limit these service providers. And also, at the same time, they were using some, uh, some of the powers that they have uh, from the old time, which was the power of uh, pricing and uh, the, what we can say. The, uh, let me say that there, there was some hidden power behind this uh, telecom company, which used laws and regulations to strict the work of these new service providers, these new OTT service providers. This is the dark side of the law, I can say. So, uh, so what is the win-win model? I think, uh, uh, I, I would like to, uh, to compare two scenarios that has happened in developing countries versus developed countries, or maybe success stories, not just developed countries. In developing countries, they would, they, they are, there is a barrier, there is a barrier in mind 
of these telecom services, there is a traditional thinking that they should keep their faxes going and going and going with the current model. And the current model is the traditional telecommunication services. They don't want to change their business model. This is, I think this is the problem. They should go and change their thinking. There are several win-win uh, models. I, I don't want to come back, but uh, um, all of my colleagues here expressed several of them. For example, uh, new data plans that uh, Mrs. Park uh, told about this. Mr. Park, sorry. Uh, bundling, you told about this, and also offering value-added services in addition to the uh, normal telecom services. Change of business model uh, to work on uh, traffic, to revenue on the traffic. This is something that I, I would like to uh, make more pressure on this. I think the main barrier of the telecom service providers right now, those who are just thinking traditional, is that they do not have a, a, a long-term thinking. In long-term thinking, they should uh, focus on new services, focus on new business models that they can change to, to provide, to keep their revenue, to keep their profit, and uh, continue their uh, business as successful at, as it is right now. Uh, well, actually, I would like to summarize here, and uh, I will be happy to uh, answer your questions regarding my experience in my country. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is uh, Harry Swandito. I'm from uh, one telco providers in Indonesia. Uh, having understand or having uh, learned the sharing from the Korea and China, uh, what I think is that uh, the situations may be different from one country to other countries. In China and in Korea, from what we just heard, that uh, the collaboration between uh, telco providers and also uh, OTT players is, is, is open, its possibility is there. But then what I would like to hear from your opinion from the panelists, in the situation where the market is, is totally different, where provider has not strong position as compared in China and Korea, in China and Korea, maybe the telecom operators, maybe two or three. But here, for instance, in Indonesia, we have more than five. So the, the, the market, uh, the, the, the uh, bargain position for the operators in the market is different as compared to uh, China and also in Korea. That's one thing. And then second thing, so maybe the domestic uh, OTT players or application provider is not as strong in in. in as in Indonesia as compared to China and also in, in Korea. Uh, the, 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 the availability of the applications and the players. And also the language is slightly different. My understanding is in Korea and China had to have a specific way of re, uh, writing words in, compared to Indonesia means we are using uh, uh, more Latin. So that's that one thing. So. So how these uh, panelists see the situations in the, in the market where the operator is not as strong as in China and Korea? And then uh, also the applications, provider specific, particular specific uniqueness in Indonesia is not as, as unique in, as in Korea and also in, in China. So maybe I can ask first or have a further collaboration uh, for the explanation from uh, Mr. Park or maybe from Zoveng. Thank you for your question. Yeah, uh, where you, you your country hosts this uh, IGF uh, events uh, very very nice uh, uh, reception. So yeah, I want to thank you. The uh, but uh, I think uh, your question is uh, maybe very difficult to answer. It's 
because we have a pen. I, I, I don't think so. Panelists uh, know the Indonesia market very well, but uh, I, I asked the, uh, my panelists uh, to uh, briefly to answer you in principle. Okay, then we have another uh, distinguished panelist. He came later from Russia, so I, I have to keep uh, some time for uh, his presentation. So maybe, uh, Ms. Park, maybe you can brief a response to this question. So I will briefly answer to that question. Um, regarding the net neutrality, whether um, legal re regulation or government intervention is needed or not, uh, could depend upon each country's uh, market situation. Uh, unfortunately, Korea's market uh, situation is oligopolistic, unlike um, the, the Indonesian situation. But um, taking into account that um, the global nature of Internet and the end-to-end -end principle, uh, we may think there's some kind of global discussion on this, the net neutrality issue. So... Um, there are a lot of global movement to uh, put uh, net neutrality as a norm in each country. So um, I think uh, uh, there will be a dynamic coalition of, on net neutrality tomorrow morning here in uh, IJAP Bali. I think the session will be uh, very helpful to understand more about net neutrality. Uh, you have to, you want to say something? Okay, can I uh, launch it first? Uh, maybe, I, I, maybe you wait a moment, okay? Yeah, afterward. Maybe, I think, uh, uh, Ms. Jiang you, you maybe you, you can answer some question later. Okay. I, I, now I want to invite the last uh, panelist uh, from Russia, uh, Dr. Komarov, uh, he he is come from the Russia National Research University, Higher School of Economics. Uh, maybe Dr. Komarov, you make a very brief presentation. Yeah, okay, because uh, the time will run out. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, pleasure being here. So uh, we'll try to do you know as short as possible. So uh, in terms of win-win strategies, uh, I think it's necessary to uh, remind about uh, some you know trends going on around uh, trends for Internet of Services and Internet of Things integration. Uh, the thing is that uh, due to mobile, uh, let's say technologies. Uh, implementation, massive implementation. Uh, we uh, actually moved to another era when uh, we have data-driven approach, which means that uh, that's, that's actually how Internet of Services, uh, you know, that's the basis for the Internet of Services. We are talking about data-driven approach. Uh, another uh, another uh, approach is that uh, services should be massive, but there should be customer centricity in terms of uh, service development and service delivery. Uh, so first we have date-driven approach. Second, we have personalization, but uh, in terms of massive market. Uh, the third one, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, third-party uh, added value for, for the services. Uh, and actually, uh, it's... Uh, you know, in, in, in my opinion, uh, we're not talking about uh, service providers or uh, telecom providers uh, uh, earning money. We are talking about third party uh, providing connection between uh, service providers, telecom providers, and customers. Uh, the thing is that uh, it's the same question when we're talking about win-win strategy. It's the same question as, uh, you know, what, what was first, eggs, or, you know, egg or, or chicken, right? So uh, 
when we're talking about services, we are talking about infrastructure for service delivery. And that's why, that's where we have telecom providers, right? Uh, but now, uh, we live in service oriented economy, which means that, uh, it's not just infrastructure, it's service which, uh, users, which customers, uh, which they use, which means that, uh, they would pay for service to someone, to the company, um, delivering that service to it. So we are talking about service providers. And uh, in terms of win-win strategy, yeah, from telecom side, it was already, I think, well explained by colleagues from the panelists, uh, from the panel. Uh, we, we have, you know, for the telecoms, we have uh, data, we have, we have uh, traffic, uh, special data plans, right? For the service providers, we have subscriptions and, uh, you know, some, some useful services, let's say so, uh, for the customers. So anyway, uh, we, we, we all, uh, in terms of uh, OTT, in terms of telecom providers, they both depends on uh, they, they both depend on, on you know on their customer, and uh, usually it's this, you know the same customer for them, but uh, customer pays you know one amount of money for the infrastructure for the service delivery and another amount of money for the particular service, and that's where we have that boundary of uh, probably coming from not from telecom providers. Because telecom providers, they were first, you know, uh, introduced to the customers as their communication service providers, right? Uh, but uh, from uh, more, you know, from internet service providers, from uh, OTT side uh, companies, because uh, they are interested in boundaries. They're interested in having their own infrastructure for the service delivery. And uh, that's actually where regulations apply. So in terms of monopoly, in terms of uh, com com competitions and co competitors in the market. Uh, that's why uh, mm -hmm. where we have the third party appearing at the same time. The third party trying to be neutral, uh, you know, from the telecom uh, operator side and neutral from service providers. But uh, let's say uh, marketing part probably, this, this third, you know, the third uh, uh, the third party which would be responsible uh, for their uh, proper service delivery and uh, profit uh, distribution between uh, telecom providers and internet service providers. So that's my, you know, short opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Komarov. Uh, for your contribution. Now, the, I think uh, we have a very limited time, but I still want to open floor to, for discussion and uh, for remote participants. Maybe from a remote side, have some questions, yes. comments? Yes. Yeah, please. Okay, uh, this question comes from Mr. Keisuke. He's from Center for Global Communication Tokyo and the question for uh, speaker from Tencent. Tencent. Okay. The question is uh, when you talk about OTT and infrastructure, one of the assumption is uh, that they should play independently. If both parties collaborate, it may be a win-win game for the two players. But it does not work uh, that way for other OTT players. So I just wonder if it can be a real solution for OTT and network problem. Thank you. Okay. Uh, when you talk about OTT and infrastructure, one of the assumption is that they should play independently. If both are, uh, if both parties collaborate, it may be a win-win game for two players. Uh, but it doesn't work that the way for OTT players. So uh, I just wonder if it can be a real solution for ETT and network problem. Thank you. You mean uh, not only win-win between operators and uh, OTT. Uh, players, but also should win between OTT enterprises. And 
<laughs> a little bit strange, you know. Uh, I think uh, there are many, many OTT enterprises now in China, and they they deliver, deliver different uh, mobile app, and uh, for the similar uh, application, maybe their relationship is kind of a competition relationship. So um, I think um, for the different uh, mobile app, maybe they um, not because for for this uh, session, the topic is the um, relationship between uh, OTT and the operators. And then now, uh, Weixin, this is a new way to come uh, to com communicate, and uh, that's made some challenge um, to the operators. But other OTT app may, may maybe have some different situation. So here, I think uh, we just uh, focus the relationship between the kind of APP uh, may generate some substitution of the traditional operator's services, such voice and SMS and MMS. I'm not sure if I answered your question. <laughs> uh, no, no more question, remotely? OK, on site, on site, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <laughs> I would like um, to um, deliver my question to the speaker from Korea and China uh, on the relationship between uh, OTT and, um, and telco operators. You know, when we are talking about the battle between OTT and telco operators, we are not able uh, to unless ourselves on, um, from the discussion on the revenue decline of the telcos. Because um, generally, um, the telco revenue is declining after the, the OTT business is growing uh, very fast. And when uh, we are talking about the, the decline of the revenues, automatically at the same time we are talking about the decline, declining of income for the government because the government take, uh, take the taxes, um, regular charges uh, from the licensing from, from the operators. And of course um, the government, would, they don't like um, the, the income um, of their income uh, decreasing. And uh, in this case, um, can you tell me do... Um, the government able to impose what they call a national sovereignty in this in this case because uh, we the OTT and the telco operators they, they are uh, doing the business within uh, the state jurisdiction. Okay, can can uh, they force it um, to let's say win win solution or whatsoever? Thank you. Mm, thank you for your question. The, maybe maybe Mr. Mr. Chang the answer more detail later. Uh, my according to my knowledge is the China government still uh, still the uh, staying aside from the operator and the OTT uh, providers. Uh, uh, see and the researcher uh, no action yet, any action yet. So uh, no researching and uh, no some charge for. Or, or the uh, re re reduction of the taxes from uh, from operator. No, 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 any actions no, yet. But uh, I think uh, uh, maybe uh, in near future, maybe some uh, uh, new regulation regime will be happen. I believe. In China, not only uh, I think uh, uh, operators is stay on the companies; they pay taxes to government. And uh, um, Tencent is a private company. Also, we published uh, in, in Hong Kong stock market, and it, we also pay a lot of tax to the government. So, I, I don't think uh, government will uh, make any decisions depends on the taxes. Uh, who pay them much more or uh, more or less, but uh, and this is a trend. In fact, uh, the technical trend and uh, also a global trend. Everyone know the, know that. For Tencent, you know, we we have a lot of 
users on the PC side. We just now I mentioned the instant messaging QQ is uh, is uh, very successful. Why we still develop another mobile app, um, WeChat? That's because we we have to facing this uh, change, change to the mobile internet era. Operator is the same. Maybe before they rely a lot on their traditional services, voice and SMS, but maybe in the near future, they will shift their revenue to the data. Okay. Well, I think uh, the, because uh, now already four, five, we have to close the, our workshop. So I think it is topic on the uh, ecosystem for operator and uh, OTT service is uh, it's a very new uh, challenge for all the uh, parties in telecommunication industry, not only for operators, but also for government, for regulators. So I think uh, the our uh, today afternoon workshop is a very interesting and very successful. So I would like to thank all the panelists present here for their wonderful uh, trans uh, contribution and the presentations. And also on behalf of the uh, Internet Society of China, I thank all the participants present here stay with us to join this uh, workshop. Thank you again. Okay.